Hello, uh, my name is Sarah. Um, welcome to my channel, Sarah Upside Down. <laughs> Glitch is trying to join us again. It's inevitable. If I start it, she's going to be like, it's my time to shine. <laughs> Anyways, um, on my channel, I kind of just discuss, like, right now, it's my uh, personal journey uh, with uh, being autistic, um, learning about my autism, ADHD, um, learning disabilities and different stuff like that, and um, trying to put out tips and help for others. Uh, today, this episode is going to be about my, um, my journey with getting a diagnosis and kind of what all I went through um, in that process after kind of being in a situation where I was, you know, self-diagnosed, didn't know if I'd get any further, and just um, trying to learn more about that. So, anyways, we'll get right into it. I just had to do the handguns at some point. It just happens, like, when I feel awkward, I'm like, look at these guys! Ah, help me, stop. <laughs> um, so glad I have my lovely kitty here today. I feel like an evil genius where I'm just like... But... Um, so to begin with, whenever I found out, uh, that I was autistic and I had done a ridiculous amount of research, um, which, you know, I don't think that, oh, if you just haven't done like this amount, you can't even say that. But for me, it was like, and I feel like my autism is, you know, I'm digging, I'm digging, I'm digging, I'm digging, I'm going to just keep on digging and find out everything I can, find out all the facts, find out all the information. Um, I watched like oh, many different advocates, uh, old, young, uh, my age, uh, you know, women and men that had been diagnosed like later on in their lives, uh, books and all kinds of stuff that I'm going to make a list for references for later. But immediately it was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, no, this is crazy, you know. And like, I also watched videos on different advocates that I had, uh, that I still listen to, on their experiences with going through getting a diagnosis, kind of their horror stories is what I would like. Like, I feel like I should have a flashlight while discussing this because, I mean, that's what it feels like a little bit. But, and just how they were treated in certain ways and, like, uh, when they wanted to bring it up or how they were looked at. And... I struggle with anxiety, so that, and that's, you know, one of the, the things that goes along with my uh, autism and ADHD, and so, although it was helpful to hear, it was also hard because I was like, is this even worth it, you know, should I even pursue this, like, I've looked up enough information myself, you know, should I just be okay with that? Um, and for some people that's fine and it is really hard to get a diagnosis. Sometimes it's insurance and money and it costs thousands of dollars and uh, when you're an adult um, and just there being more um, specialists that uh, know more about autism and adults and not just try to base it on you know, children and, you know, these traits and different things like that, because as most of autis us autistics learn that we present differently later on, especially if we've masked forever. I'm one of those, so it just, you know, it's, I could see why it'd be difficult. Anyways, <laughs> so much on that area uh, that I could discuss, but, um, Um, I not only looked into advocates, I also watched um, different uh, psychologists, neuropsychologists. I mean, it was it was definitely turning into an extreme interest, <laughs> um, special interest, whatever you want to call it for me, just neurology and all that in general. But I would like snapshot all of the charts and the um, the graphs and everything that these professionals would put up on their YouTube page because I like to be able to see 
the differences, you know, what they have discovered. I want to be able to see it, you know, from all these sides. Now in conversation, I may not do so well with that. <laughs> but when it comes to data and information, I'm like, I need to see all of it. You know, I want to, it, whether I agree with it or not, I want to kind of be able to see what these people um, have been able to link as far as ADHD and autism and all that. So, blah, da, 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 fast forward, I put all that information together back onto the topic of like, why should I pursue a diagnosis? Should I? Um, and the, I would say, lack of support that I received at the time from family members, members even in my household that didn't quite get it, uh, parents, siblings, like the whole shebang. Um, because, I mean, I was even at a point where I had been arrogant, um, and I didn't know much, uh, even about, you know, friends or others that turned out they were on the spectrum. Surprise, you know? Um, but they just, they didn't have the knowledge, the education, they didn't have enough stuff themselves to know what that even meant or to know that it wasn't all a bad thing. So, I was really debating on it because I'm like, do I just want to get this so I can be like, you know, here you go, here's this paper, here's your proof, or did I want to get it for myself because, you know, maybe that would help me get back into school. Like, I had a lot of learning disabilities as well, probably with just the ADHD also, and, um... So, you know, causing self-esteem issues and being able to uh, learn like everybody else was really, really hard. So I, I just I just do better on my own, it turns out, <laughs> and just researching all, everything. Um, <clears throat> but it was a battle because I think that masking and, and trying to be what everybody else wants you to be your entire life, I just could not, I could not decide, like, for myself, if I wanted to do this for myself, even at this point. She, she's trying to eat my hand. <laughs> um, so, I had been going through, like, you know, even classes about codependency and stuff recently. I mean, a lot of stuff led me up to this point to actually take the time to look into myself and, and some of these things. Um, and so I had to just, you know, not be selfish, but yes, in a way, <laughs> but really take that time to look at me and, and my needs because, well, to be honest, and even my therapist helped me recognize this, that like a lot of those things weren't met in a lot of ways, whether that was on education you know, through like my parents or teachers or whatever else, uh, other places that I had gone through, doesn't make them all bad guys or anything like that. I was one of the ones who slipped through the cracks. Um, so, slipped through the cracks in school, you know, just in a lot of different areas, but I still was always trying, trying, and trying, and trying to figure everything out. Um, and... Um, ow. Well, I am not happy about that. <laughs> she was in one of her playful moods, and I mean, I can attest to this. I feel like she's like my spirit animal or something, but like she gets in these, these times when she just really wants to play, and she's like really craving all this stuff and sensory and wants you to pet her and play and whatever, and then I'm like, ow, no, I don't want to play like that. So we just had one of those moments. <laughs> so. Fast forward on what I was talking about. So I didn't want to be falling through the cracks anymore. And I wanted to be able to, you know, see a future for myself, you know, and, and yes, I'm a mother and those things are all beautiful and wonderful as well. But um, I've just always had a hard time thinking like I'm capable of things, like good enough to do things and other stuff probably plays into that. But a lot of it was just not knowing about my autism and the positive stuffs about my autism. 
So I'm going to try to speed this up because I'm trying to keep these short. But yes, yes, no matter what, no matter how long it took me, I was going to pursue getting a diagnosis because it wasn't just to, you know, show it off or like all oh, you people who don't, you know, really believe me. And like, I'm literally showing you things about myself. Like I even looked into my childhood, like I said on the last video, everything pointed to that, everything, all of it, the whole shebang, <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> everything. Um, I need tea. It's a great thing. Um, and so, oh, look at her back there. Isn't she so cute when she's, like, doing that? It's kind of funny to watch. Like, I'm just like, ah, but it's so cute when she's doing that. Okay. Um, ADHD kitty. <laughs> but, yes, and I was going to do that, and so I did. And so, um, finally, after I don't know how many years of going to different counselors and things like that, finally found a good one. Super supportive. Helps me, like you know, kind of put the belief in me, help me to like start going to the gym, like all this different kind of stuff. She is amazing. I honestly don't know what I would do without her. her and if she ever has to move, like, I don't know. <laughs> because she's referred me to so many great places for myself and my kids and different things like that. And I'm just really grateful to have her. Um, I might talk her ear off, but she is wonderful and super helpful. <laughs> um, but she supported that, and um, I think it just, it was that, even if I would have been in school, if there would have been, like, one teacher, one person, someone that, uh, you know, saw some of these things or pointed them out or just was supportive of it or, um, you know, that I would have felt like someone maybe um, believed in me. I mean, honestly, and I'm always like this, like, cheer person for other people and like, kind of an advocate, like, yeah, go do this and, you know, um, but also was, was one of the main ones for that for me as well. And so whenever I found all this out and like, I just didn't have that support, it was hard to want to keep going and go for a diagnosis. Like, you know, they just think of a hypochondriac, like they just, I mean, there, there was stuff that I did here later that they actually did, you know, that, um, that I was basically just invalidated and, and a lot of stuff, um, and just, it just went one ear and out the other of who I would talk to. Uh, there was family members that I feel like didn't want to see it themselves or it was hard for them to see it. So it turned into kind of about them and, um, that was, that was pretty hard to go through, but I did have a couple of people that supported me, understood a couple of the friends and that little bit, that's all I needed. <laughs> Just, you know, like someone thinks I'm not full of crap and yes, I know my eyes are brown, but that's, that's, that is not true. <laughs> They're beautiful. <laughs> um, and so I did go in to get my testing and stuff done, and it was nerve-wracking. I was completely anxious that whole week because of all the crazy stories that I heard. And after probably months in the first place of just trying to find a neuropsychologist or a psychologist with horrible insurance, I mean, yes, I have it, but it's just horrible, won't name them, but not great. <laughs> um, I mean, I had to fight for that. I had to fight just to get to one place, to get to the other, to get the referral, to get the exception, to get this, to get that. You get the picture. Like, ugh. <laughs> um, and then I even had to get assistance to have a caseworker on the phone because I do not do well with phone calls. It's just not, it's just one of my things, one of my autism things that... I'm just not a fan, and so I did have someone help me with that part, and that was nice. Um, it was also kind of weird, like, to accept that, that I needed that help, and I've had a problem with, you know, wanting to accept help and stuff.
from people. Wonder why. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but it was nice. It felt good to have like just that for that little bit that is really hard for me to do. Um, that's when my verbal skills and stuff just like go right down the you know trash can and <laughs> you know, just not there. <laughs> um, but yeah, so got all the testing done. The neuropsych. He, he was, you know, like I didn't have, it, it was a mutual thing. I agreed with a lot of stuff that he said, and so did my therapist when she looked over the stuff. There was a couple things that she didn't quite agree with, but I did get my diagnosis um, of autism spectrum disorder, um, and um, with showing a lot of autistic traits. Uh, as well on the same day, even though I had like been previously diagnosed uh, as a junior in high school, um, also diagnosed with ADHD, both inattentive and hyperactive. Um, and if you want to know the differences of those or like if you can have both or one or whatever, you can comment below or ask me questions. I have kind of known about my ADHD for a lot longer but it didn't completely make sense in a lot of ways um, because because I, need, I had the other piece, <laughs> you know, that I needed to put in there. Um, so, anyways, that was nerve-wracking. Um, and after that, I didn't really know, like, you know, how I felt. I think I finally had to sort of go through a process of this is great like I finally have this information like I'm not gonna go post my papers or whatever on Facebook like look I have this right here. I told y'all <laughs> you know but it felt really good to know like for myself and then I was able to start working on things that would help with that side somewhat for my ADHD that's just sort of there and I'm super sensitive to a lot of stuff, so medication is really hard for me. But just knowing more about the autism,